Tonight, Joe meets the Chapman family, and for the first time ever, it's the kids who are calling for Joe's help. Super Nanny, please come help us. Two teenage girls who've been left to raise their three little brothers, clean the house, and homeschool themselves while their parents are gone all day. With their days and nights packed with chores and babysitting, they're failing out of school and pushed to the brink of exhaustion. Whoop, whoop. Despite everything, these parents don't want to change their ways. Mom's getting fed up with all this super nanny stuff. Can Joe keep it together? This is so sad. Like nothing you've seen before, the most emotional super nanny ever. I'll never talk. Let's take a look and see what we've got this time. Hi, we're the Chapman family. I'm Brittany. I'm Mariah. Well, this is a first. Teenagers calling me in for help. Must be pretty bad. We're sisters and we have three brothers. Ethan is four, Cole is four, and Quinn is three. I'm Kevin! My mom's name is Sarah. You should be able to get a hold of me. I'll just be at the studio working on stuff. And my dad's name is Glenn. Hey, Mariah. Our house is pretty crazy. Me and Mariah are both homeschooled. We go to classes that we have online where we can talk to the teacher. We kind of have to teach ourselves. Bye. See you later. My parents work full-time jobs. My dad works as a customer service sales rep, and my mom is a photographer. She has her own business that she just started. And turn just a little bit more this way. You've gotten so much stuff piled on top of us. We have to do school and keep the kids and clean the house. It's crazy. <laughs> Pretty much me and Ray feel like we're parents to them. Stop! And it's been really hard. It's too much for these girls. Our grades aren't the best right now. My brothers interrupt us when we're doing anything. Help it. Help it. Help it. We've fallen further and further behind, and I'm failing pretty much a lot of my classes. Our host is not a good learning environment. Quinn! There's no schoolwork being done here. I don't think my dad understands us at all. Can you, can you please get me a nail clipper? Can you clip his nails? That's a table. He's just a very negative person to us. We want my dad to understand and know what actually goes on and how hard it is for us. My mom doesn't really pay attention to the whole family that much. The business is more important. We can't. <clears throat> we feel really jailed up in this house. Um, we can't do anything today. So when do these girls get a chance to be teenagers? <laughs> Me and Mariah are both giving up on school and giving up on a lot of stuff, and we don't want to be like that. We just want us to be a happier family, and we want to be normal kids. Super Nanny, please come help us. Our family needs it a lot. This is just sad. Girls, I'm on my way. Just hold on in there. Hello. Hello. Pleased to meet you. I'm Jo. I'm Sarah. Hi. Come on in. When Jo first walked in our house, I felt excited but also somewhat intimidated. My biggest fear is that she will misinterpret our intentions for having the girls helping out with the kids and doing the things that they do. Pleased to meet you. I'm Brittany. Hi, Brittany. When Jo first came, we were like, oh my gosh, she's actually here. So, lots of stuff to sort out. What I am going to do today, though, is watch your day. Just do what you would normally do if I wasn't here, OK? OK. You know, it was important for me, because the girls had called me in, to really get true representation of how this family operated. And there was Brittany and Mariah taking care of the house and making sure breakfast was ready. I noticed on the wall in the kitchen there was a board that had loads of chores on them. And I saw the girls' names attached to that. It seems like they do everything. So, Glenn, 
How much work do the girls get done while you're at work? I think they should get done more than they do. There's a lot of tension between me and the two of them on that scale right there. Yeah. You know, if they want to go do something with their friends, it's it, probably just because it's the way my parents dealt with me. Are your chores done? Great. Yeah. You know, but if my stuff wasn't done, it's like, why are you asking? But do you have good relationships with your parents? Mm, no, not really. Kind of estranged from my own family. You're estranged from your own family? Yeah. My mom was controlling to the nth, 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 nth degree. Well, I have to question whether Glenn's just stopped to think about that situation and how he's carrying on that same pattern throughout his own family. Who wants to? Did you wash your hands? Yeah. I'm leaving. Within an hour and a half of me being in the house, Mum told the girls that she was going off to work. So you'd be gone right until about six? Yep. Oh, right, OK. See you later. Bye. Fun. Within minutes, Glenn left to go off to work. Baker. I'm getting all riled. You want him screaming or giggling? OK. That, that, to me, was just crazy. These parents was going off to work and leaving their 17-year-old and 14-year-old to take care of three busy boys whilst expecting them to do schoolwork online. Oh, you have to work. Off to work. <laughs> As Glenn left to go off to work, Quinn just had a meltdown. This is pretty normal. There's something quite sad about that when he feels it's quite normal. That's what his girl should do, look after his sons. <laughs> This is just absurd. This really is. This really is. <laughs> so, Brittany, what's happening now? You're trying to get the little one down for a sleep. Nap time. Right, and the older ones? They're just having quiet time. <laughs> Ow, don't bite me. You know, right now I can hear Quinn screaming at the top of his lungs. And it's stressful for these older girls because they really don't know what to do and they shouldn't know what to do. You know, they're kids. This isn't Saturday or Sunday. It's not a summer break. It's Tuesday. And these girls are not at school because they're acting as these kids' parents. <laughs> Quinn's temper tantrum has spiralled out of control now. This is crazy, isn't it? There we are, watching these teenage girls trying to figure out really what they should do. Should this be their concern? Coming up, Joe's emotions get the best of her. I'll never talk. And later, the stress takes its toll. Right. Brittany, Brit, call 911. When Super Nanny returns. Okay. These girls are just trying to do the best they can every day in looking after the boys and trying to get their work done. You want to cut it? You got to push down really hard. I mean, their grades have been really bad. You better sit down. Ma'am. Oh, Ma'am. When? Ethan. There's no real way that Brittany can do her schoolwork. She's overlooking her laptop constantly to make sure that the kids, they're being taken care of. Make me another sandwich. How are these girls supposed to study? It's kind of like Mum taking the younger ones to work with her, with them running around. Well, she's not going to be able to get any work done, is she? School is a mandatory foundation for these girls' future. And these parents have been selfish. What is it that you do day in and day out and you're like, I'm fed up with this? Watching them 24-7, not being able to go places. I'm sick of cleaning and cooking and being a mom. If you turned around and said to me, Joe, I just want to be a teenager, OK, what would that represent for you? Having a life. Yeah, you. My word, I don't remember the last time that I was hugged so hard I want to hear what's going on right now, right in here. The quiet 
girl that I'm actually looking at now is, is not you. Usually very loud and annoying. <laughs> Where is there room for you it, to have a relationship with your dad? I've kind of given up trying because I don't see that he respects us. Everything that we do is never good for him. These girls look after these boys and don't have an outlet. An adult would eventually break down if they did not take care of themselves. So why do these parents feel that their teenage daughters wouldn't? There were certain stages throughout the day that the older girls would just sit on the sofa at a complete loss of really not knowing what to do with the boys. <laughs> A lot of the mood swings that we see comes from them not having structure for them. Oh, stop <laughs> kicking me. It hurts. Stop it then. What's it, what, what is it that you feel most frustrated about when this happens? That, he, that I can't get him to stop crying. That he can't control it. I'll start the floors. Do the dishes. Okay. I'll just sit down and I'll get the books. Come here, Cole. But it just seems like they're never off duty. Quinn. Are you girls literally trying to get all the chores done before she gets back? Yeah. So if the things are not done, what's Dad like when he gets home? Crabby. I just find it incredibly sad and irresponsible that these parents have not even just stopped to think how much they're putting on their daughters. Sarah had told Brittany that she was going to be home by six o'clock. <gasps> the girl's tired. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're hungry. What the kids have for dinner tonight? Anything? My mom said that she's going to bring home subs. What time is that then? We don't know, do we? Do you want to um, give your mum a call and find out when she is going to come back? There was Brittany, the teenager, calling her mum to see where she was. And it's like what parents do with the teenagers. It's six o'clock, where are you? You're meant to be home, you know? So she's not picking up her personal phone. So you're now ringing the studio phone. I would expect any mother, working or not, to have their phone on, especially under those circumstances. OK. <laughs> Brittany's only done eight hours with the kids, so what's another hour? It's not going to hurt, is it? Yes, <laughs> it is. Yep. Mama's home. Hey, buddy. Hi, Mom. Hi. Here. Here. Hi, how was your day? A little busy, <laughs> as usual. So. When Mum came home, she explained it's not always like this. Half of the week it is, and half of the week it's not. Well, quite frankly, half the week's too much for me if you're having to give your kids fast food. <laughs> so who's tidying this up? Me and Brittany. And these girls are left here to clear up everything. There isn't a bedtime routine in this house. There was musical beds. See, nobody's getting a good night's sleep. It's manic, it really is. <coughs> Quinn just had a meltdown. He started crying and he couldn't stop. <coughs> so what's happened? I just set him on the bed. That, that, to me, was just crazy. Where Cole's trying to sleep and Brittany's trying to get Cole down to sleep. Mm -hmm. And now you've just gone and put yep. the baby in the bedroom. You <coughs> need to stop. <coughs> you feeling sick? Just dizzy. Huh? I'm OK now, just... Wave, sun wave. No, 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 I'm fine, I'm fine. And I'm looking at her thinking, no, you're not fine. You look pale and you're dizzy. I'm okay, really. 
But you're not. You know you're not. Who's Carl? And where was Mum? Sitting down in the sofa in the sitting room. So whose turn is it now? Because you've walked away. Whose turn is it? I don't know. I don't. I toss up my hand and throw in the towel because I just don't know what to do to get them all to just, you know, that's that's how it is every night. You just get to the point where it's like I can't deal anymore. I don't know. I give up. I throw a white towel. I'm done. You're done. So I'm so done. who who deals with the kids now then? Who deals with the kids? If you're done and it's quick, towel in. Brittany and Mariah. Kids? Oh, I forgot the girls. <laughs> Britney's in there right now. So it's Britney's dealing with, right, OK. Let's go and see that, then. This is so sad. This is so sad. I can't even talk. But I've seen a lot today in observation. Uh, enough that I'm ready to, to just leave and come in tomorrow and really address some serious issues with mum and dad. There's a lot to be said tomorrow and quite frankly, I don't think it's going to be a pretty picture tomorrow either. We need to cut to the chase. My observation yesterday was heartbreaking. There have been spirits here that have been broken. And a smell, not just of desperation, but of fear. Sarah, you have a 17-year-old and a 14-year-old. And they are left to raise three younger boys. Some would call that selfish. When I started my own business, it was with the intent of just having more flexibility than working for someone else and a way to bring in some additional income into the family. And it just, it, it exploded. But you don't even juggle effectively to be able to allow yourself to go to work and take on your moral responsibilities as a mother in raising your children. You're telling me things that I know. It's more. How do I fix them? My concern is whether you want to. Because at the end of the day, it was your daughters that called me. Because it certainly didn't come from the pair of you. From your daughters crying out for help because the people they should be able to come to, they felt they couldn't. I want to talk about schoolwork. These young girls can't do the work that they need to do and focus and pull those grades when they're looking after three young kids. It's not happening. All it does is shatter their self-esteem. You have no idea what these girls have to deal with during the day. And they're trying to do their work. Which brings me on to schedule. Where, where is the schedule? There is none. What do your boys do all day? How are we stimulating and enhancing their imagination, their creativity? I'm not here during the day. I'm working. I'm gone. I so don't does know that, what I'm supposed so, to do while I'm gone. So does that take your responsibility away of what you should be doing as a father? What chaos bedtime is. I mean, yesterday, Sarah, you said to me, I'm throwing the towel in, I quit. Quitting is to give up. You can't, you can't give up. I believe I said that when my two-year-old was having a meltdown. Correct. And who took care of that? <clears throat> Brittany. Doesn't that say something, Sarah? May I ask you what kind of a relationship you have right now with your daughters? What kind of relationship do you think you have with them? Not as good as it used to be. I mean, where do you think you're going to be in the next five years with your daughters? Couldn't tell you. I can. You can be nowhere, Glenn. A father is the first role model that a young girl has of the opposite sex. It's such an important relationship. Your daughters have low self-esteem because they're not given the love and the attentiveness that they deserve. You expect too much. You're nodding. Because you're 100% right. Tell your husband.
They can't ever voice their opinion. They can't ever say, I don't agree with you, Dad, on this. It's not okay for them to say that at all, ever. And that's not fair. That's not fair to them at all. I just want to have a household where everybody respects each other. You will not get respect from anyone in this house unless you give respect. And you're breaking spirits, Glenn. You're snapping backbones here, mate. Is that the kind of father that you really want to be? Obviously not. If you really don't shape up, you are going to lose everything. Now, if you want to hold on to what you have, you need to change. Your girls rang me to come in and help their family. Everything I've seen in your house can be changed. So I smelt fear and I smelt desperation, but it doesn't mean I can't smell hope here. So are we going to go for this? Uh, are we going to turn around and say, yes, we deserve to change things around? Huh? So let's do it and let's get cracking soon as. OK, thank you. Coming up, Joe forces the family to communicate, but the pressure proves all too much for Brittany. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Right. When Super Nanny returns. This family needs somebody to tell them what they need to do to change. But the first thing for me that was important was for Glenn to prove to these girls that they could start to trust him. Dad, let's have a quick word. I think it's important for you as a father just to be able to sit down with the girls and just clear the air, be the role model as a father. These girls need a hug from their dad. I just wanted to talk to you guys, just us. There's been a lot of poor choices and poor actions on my part. Uncool. And I'm, I'm sorry for that. If we're going to do this thing, we need to close the doors on that part. And this needs to be clean slate moving forward. Agreed? Agreed. Truce? Mariah, what are some of your concerns? And they were very reluctant at first. Mariah hesitated many times and looked at Brittany for reassurance that it would be OK to do so. I'm not going to be upset about anything. I want to move forward. You to trust us more. Mm. Like, when we're, if we're cleaning something or doing something, don't tell us how we should do it. So in two quick words, just back off. Yeah. OK. <laughs> so as a young female, what do you need from your dad? Encouragement and more time spent together. What do you need from dad, Brittany? Huh? I don't feel like you and I are close anymore. I don't feel like I can talk to you if I have a problem. If I need help with something, I don't feel like I can come to you with it. I think for the first time, Glenn realised, as he looked into his daughter's faces, that they were hurt. That hurts to hear that. And I promise that I am going to do everything I can to change that. You guys know that I love you more than anything. That's all you need to know. I love you guys. Now that Dad and the girls have cleared some air, it's important to establish a routine to take the pressure off the girls so Mum can have the responsibility in raising her boys. What I have here is the family routine. All it's going to do is solidify the family unit. At 9 o'clock, I've put here girls' school. So the girls get their four hours of teaching. The boys need to be looked after. Mm -hmm. So who's going to do that? Mum. <laughs> Sarah, at first, was rather hesitant. You could see she was quite scared of the fact that she'd have to be looking after her boys all on her own. And what would she do by herself? How would she manage? From 2.30 onwards in the afternoon, that's when you get to go and do your projects, whatever it is, your assignment for that afternoon with regards to photography. What happens between four and seven? Who takes care of the three younger boys? Are you asking what it has been or what it should be? No, what it should be. Like, what are you going to do about it now? 
The options are the girls babysit. Yes. That's what's been going on. Yep. The other options are hire someone. Can you do that? I'm sure we can. Glenn's Glenn shaking his head. He's like, yeah. We're going to have to do that. That's, that's going to be our only option. OK. That's what I like to hear. Shake my hand. Glenn stood firm and said, we need to get a babysitter whilst you're at work. And I was really happy that he stepped up and said that. For me, that was a really good sign. So I would like to uh, put a slot in here for just Brittany and Mariah time. OK, Dad, with the girls, this is your framework for your family. Bingo, good job. All right, be there, good job. Hey. So after going through the routine with both mum and dad, I then took the girls to the routine and explained exactly what was going to happen. So there's enough opportunity here for you girls to go out and do your own thing as well. Meet up with your friends. The teenagers. <laughs> My God, it's the first time I've seen you girls smile. <laughs> I loved it. I love the routine. When does it start? <laughs> Next, I wanted to show the family exactly how overloaded these girls are with their chores. Dishwasher. Me. Breakfast. Me. OK, laundry. Mom. Fold clothes. Yeah, it's everyone. I'll, yeah. <clears throat> everyone. <laughs> Brittany. Yeah. Right, let's go. Mom, Mom. and Dad have a notable disagreement on that one, but that's OK. I don't think they have good communication with their father. They are in fear of his reaction. You don't agree? You fold the clothes, though, right? Yeah. I will stand up to my parents, and Brittany is more afraid to stand up to my parents. Give me your argument. Why do you feel you fold the clothes more? Because I have been doing it more lately. What's lately? The very last time laundry was done? No. Just all the time when you guys are gone. Oh, There's not... boy. Yeah. <laughs> Just as I was going over the chores, I saw that Brittany looked a little pale, a little faint. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Brit. Brittany. Brit. Call 911. She just passed out. Coming up. OK, what's going on? Is she OK? When Super Nanny returns. Brittany. Hmm. One minute I was staring at Brittany, the next minute she'd killed over. Brit. Hmm. Call 911. The body can only take so much before it breaks. And really, Brittany has taken on an awful amount. She just passed out. So Mum called the doctor, put Brittany in the car and took her there straight away. If this isn't enough to really turn around Glenn and Sarah, then I don't know what is going to be enough. Awesome. She fainted because she was just under a lot of stress and she hasn't been sleeping good. She was not eating really, being yelled at by my mom and my dad too. That all adds up. So you should go out and rest really. As soon as I came home from the doctor, Joe had me go upstairs and get some more rest. I think I'm stressed just from daily life at my house. Brittany took a rest, and I continued to teach the family. Brittany and Mariah currently are in an online charter school. They are actually attending a public school via the internet. However, they're not doing well with school. These girls need time in a place that creates an atmosphere for them to feel enthusiastic to work. Here we go, then. <sighs> <Sweet>. <laughs> When Joe showed me and Mariah the school zone, I was surprised that we actually have a place to work now. This is going to be your special area, all right? Your school zone, so that you can come up here, away from downstairs, and just get your work done. Before the school zone, me and Mariah would work downstairs where there's distractions. The younger ones are not going to be allowed up here. This is your time. So this whole area will be cut off. Got your dictionaries and your books up here. Place some snacks over here, look, and there's some water and stuff. The more you can focus, and the more you can concentrate, we can then start getting on the track of getting those grades up. I think my grades are gonna go up now that I have a place to actually do my homework. 
from where it's quiet. Hi! Before I go, it's time to resolve, once and for all, who does what. So, let's start again. Clean Mum and Dad's room. Mum and Dad? Dress boys. Dad. It was far easier to say, OK, who's going to take care of this and who's going to take care of that? Laundry. Me. I'll do it. Put boys to bed. Oh, ho, 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 ho. it looks like it's over to you. <laughs> <laughs> Clean the boys' bedroom. We'll do that. Yeah? Vacuum. We can do that. Breakfast. Ah, oh, we know who does that. <laughs> Give that five. Laugh the boys. Mom, it's bedtime. An empty trash. That's mine. OK, so... Ooh. I think my uh, daughters were doing little high fives behind our backs, cos now you look at that chart and it's like, Mom and Dad, girls. With the techniques in place, it's time for me to leave for a few days to see exactly how they get on alone. So take responsibility for it and make a difference for your family because you're worth it. Keep it together, all of you. I'll see you when I get back. Take care. Good night. If they can put in the commitment, the effort, and really stick and have faith, there's no reason why they cannot achieve with or without me there. She's going to be back. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up... You don't need to disrespect me like that, Britt. Will Mom and Dad really follow the new routine? This is not a free pass for them to just walk all over us. She doesn't want to accept the schedule. They're just putting on an act for the cameras. When Super Nanny returns... It's time to see if this family stuck to the routine or whether they went back to their old ways. Take a look. When Joe returned, I was a little bit fearful and yet in a good way. Are we anxious? A little. <laughs> We're having flashbacks from the last conversation we had at the table. <laughs> oh, right, OK. Come on. You want to go over to the middle school? Sure. <clears throat> we'll burn some rubber in the parking lot. <laughs> OK, before we go anywhere, I want to know that you know what what the controls are. So you tell me, what, what are the pedals for? This one's for gas, this one's for brake. What's that one over there? Emergency brake. When do you use that? In emergencies. <laughs> OK. <laughs> We're good. OK. I feel like you're hitting about a 45 degree angle, which you're coming up on it pretty quick here. That, that's, that's really, really good. Good job. All right. Loving that. Really clear communication. I love your tone of voice. The nice praise there as well. This is really good, Glenn. Seriously, this is just like, this is what every teenager wants to be doing. Okay. Oh my god. That's disgusting. Can I go for a quick walk? What? Can I just go for a quick walk? Chores done. I my my there's still I can't vacuum in here until later. Cause every time I do I just sleep. There's stuff all over the floor. Great, but I did it before, and, I, and it got messy again. So we should just not do it more than once a day, or what? I'm going to say wait till a little bit later, because it's just going to get messy again. Whatever. In there? You don't need to disrespect me like that, Britt. Whatever. Do you see what's going on here? It, the floors were really bad at that point, and they needed to be done. So um, just you know, do the one thing that I'm asking you to take your five minutes and then go for your walk. OK, but that wasn't conveyed, was right. it? That's the point mm -hmm. here. We don't have that many chores anymore. Dad said it's not going to stay that way after 
schedule leaves. Neither is the schedule. <laughs> you said that to me. Well, it was fun while it lasted. Mom's getting fed up with all this super nanny stuff. She doesn't want to accept the schedule. Can't change when the dance. cameras aren't here and when the microphones aren't on. All right. It's all just gonna go back to Crabbyville. Unless we stop it. How are we gonna stop it? Um, They're just putting on an act for the cameras. That's really how they feel. And the only way that they are going to see that that's not going to be the same is by proving that. This is not a free pass for them to just walk all over us either. You know, to be honest with you, I don't know if these parents are willing to try the techniques that I've taught them, but I want to make sure that these girls are able to voice their concerns when I've left. My main priority today is going to be building trust and good communication. So are we ready for some more work? Absolutely. Yeah? OK, so let's get cracking. Coming up... Sarah, you're on first. Can Joe help this family bridge the gap? You guys have all got to talk. Or are they too far gone? You're breaking the link, Mum. When Super Nanny returns. So who is up for going out this afternoon and having some family fun? More work needed to be done with regards to the teenagers and their parents. They could get their seatbelts on. I wanted to build on their communication skills. We're going to go over here. The nice thing is, is that we were able to take the younger ones and they played around in the woods. Oh, <laughs> and I was able to present an outdoor activity for this family to do that became challenging but fun as well. Communication lines. We're physically going to walk these lines, all four of you, holding hands. And all you have are these ropes and this wire. The rest has got to come from up here. This challenge is going to strengthen your communication as a family, OK? I could see the hesitation in their eyes, but I really wanted to bring home the essence of teamwork doing this obstacle. <laughs> Brittany, talk, talk. You guys have all got to talk. Mom, you're going too far. OK. All right, we're stuck. <laughs> What's your strategy? I'm starting What's... to fall. Right, so, so I want to make sure I can get to the exactly. other rope. So more and communication. Then... Brittany's going to have to brace you. you got to stiffen up a little bit, though, so I've got something to lean yeah. on. The more that they can feel open and free to communicate and express themselves... Can she do that, Brittany? Yes! <laughs> the more it's going to bring them closer together as a family in finding resolution to the issues as they arise. Hang on. There we go. Good job, Britt. Is this it? Are we at the end? Yep. Imagine that. It was a good measure, really, of how far they had come with regards to their communication. Well done. There's definitely work still to do there, but the fact that they were all willing to really listen and communicate with one another is a step forward. Dad listened to what I had to say and he trusted that I knew what I was doing. She did a good job. My parents listening to us doesn't happen that often. <laughs> it's pretty cool. You did an awesome job there. With all the turmoil going on in the house, the younger boys have really been left out of the picture, so I wanted to do something with them and Mum before I left. So, boys, you're going off to bed now, aren't you? So, once you've read the stories, you tuck them all into bed, and then night-night, lights off and walk out of the room. The first time the children come out, we say, it's their time, darling. The second time they come out, you say nothing. Remember, it's about just going in, guiding them back into their beds, and then coming back out again. You must not play. You must not play in the store. Absolutely wonderful. This time has been created for Mum to just cosy in with her boys and send our kids off to sleep, feeling snug. It's time for night time, OK? Let's climb into bed. This family do have the tools in place to make a positive change. So with me now leaving, I just hope they continue. So how are we all feeling? <laughs> oh, we're feeling sad. I know you're sad that I'm leaving, but truthfully, how are you feeling about everything? OK. Do you think we've made headway here? Yes. Before Joe got here, I think my relationship with my dad was close to 
calling it quits. Same with Mariah. But now part of me really believes that things are changing. Time for me to go. I just feel like there's hope for something that all of us have wanted for so long. Thank you. You're welcome. It's been a tough process. Not one that I liked all the way through it, but you know, you do what you gotta do to make things right for your family. Give your dad a chance. Hmm? He's trying. Okay? Hey! You look after yourself, all right? Didn't want Joe to leave. She's been such an influence on my life. I look up to her. I think of her as a hero. <laughs> she saved our family. I'm gonna miss her. Bye! I'm glad I was able to offer my experience and help with this family. I've definitely switched a light bulb on. If you've got two parents who are willing to step up their responsibilities and they are going to make a drastic impact on their children. Watch the wait for mom. I'm very proud of my family, of all the changes and everything that they've went through. Now we do get to do more stuff as a family. You gotta walk slow if you're gonna look for bugs. To be able to just get out and all be relaxed together has got a big high coolness factor. Okay, you guys just be yourselves. I feel like I can be a regular teenager now, and I'm really hoping that it does stay that way. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what? what did he say? <laughs> Me and my family all talk now. We know how to communicate without fighting. You know, keep it up, or I'm picking up the phone and I'm calling Joe. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Thank, Thank you, you, Joe. Okay, how fast should we go this time? Ten. Ten. Come on. I can run ten miles per hour. We're gonna do more than ten. Fifteen. I don't want to go fast. Why not? I just don't want to crash. You tell me which way we're going, because I don't know. You're driving. No, I'm not. Well, I'm not going to be a backseat driver. You're driving. You got the controls. That means you're driving. OK. So? Uh, whoops. What'd you just miss just now? A stop sign. 